Welcome to the QB Room, uh, brought to you by Happy Dad. Um, fired up for our guest this week, Matthew Leinert, Monterey, <laughs> SC, handful of teams, dad, TV analyst, and uh, two-time national title winner, Heisman Trophy winner, uh, and uh, fired up for you to join us today. Kyle's not with us. Um, he thinks there's a chance Josh Allen gets benched this week if he doesn't get it together by the second quarter and he's going to have to go in. So he just wanted to yeah, okay. make sure yeah. he went over third down protections extra. Yeah, um, I think he's a little busy. We're good. He's busy. They got a lot going on this week, um, but they're not traveling. That's good. Got to play uh, the Chiefs at home, which I think we're all fired up to see how that shakes out. But um Matt, thanks a lot. You and I have known each other forever, man. Uh, I don't remember when we met. I don't remember. I don't have a cool story or anything, but I don't know. We were kids. Yeah. Um, played with my brother at USC. Played with my brother in Oakland with the Raiders. Um, and uh, I've had an incredible career. And I, you know, you're only like a year older than me, I think, or two. But still, growing up in Orange County playing quarterback, there's a lot of names and stuff. And so you're always kind of chasing who did it ahead of you. Uh, you probably chased my brother. Yep. Um, and uh, and I, uh, I chased for a second and then drifted off into the distance behind you, um, in, uh, in the, in the way that we do it, but you're uh, thanks you're a lot. Doing, and, you're doing just fine, dude. You're doing just fine, man. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, well, I wanted to talk to you a little bit today, uh, and kind of get into USC. I know this isn't, you know, the, the, you know, America is not talking about USC football right now. We're talking about the NFL playoffs and right. kind of the portals kind of done now recruiting's kind of done now coaching cycle in college is like, I think it's pretty much set. Uh, maybe there's one or two, um, NFL is a different story, different timeline. We had talked a few weeks ago when we talked about the portal. It's crazy how in college football, the playoffs and the championship, uh, the coaching cycle, the portal and recruiting all happens at the same time. Yep. And NFL, that's just, it's not, it's, you know, the drafts in April, free agency closes here. Championships are, you know, next month. Um, and so it's bananas. And so now it's kind of now that the dust is settled instead of talking about what could happen, we kind of know what's going to happen now. And then obviously there'll be updates and stuff as we get to the spring. But when I look at USC, I grew up an SC fan watching Rob Johnson play, right. Playing for his dad. Um, they've won one PAC 12 championship in the last 15 years until our producer Connor threw this in the script. I, I would have guessed differently. Right. Um, I didn't realize that, uh, hasn't won a championship since Oh four national title. Um, so let me throw you a question. Why is it so difficult to build something in LA with the resources, with the tradition and all the stuff? Why is it so difficult right now, in your opinion, to build a championship team in LA um, as opposed to how I guess it used to be? Well, yeah. I mean, if you think so, if you think back in kind of our era when I played with your brother, when Pete was hired, I look back now and I look at that staff and you look at Pete, who obviously is an elite recruiter. Uh, you look at Ed Ogeron, who's an elite recruiter and look what he's, he did throughout his career. Won a title with LSU a couple of years ago. You look at, we had young Lane Kiffin, who's one of the best recruiters in college football. We had a young Steve Sarkeesian, who's one of the best recruiters in college football. That was all 20 years ago. We had, when I look back, I'm like, damn, like we had an elite coaching staff but we had an elite recruiting staff and so obviously that helped and then when you won we started winning Carson's senior year you know that was the first year when we really kind of took off we beat Iowa in the Orange Bowl and it was just a snowball effect we just started getting all of these players and all these recruits and we didn't really miss on on hardly anybody um, so a lot of that had to do with the staff um, also a lot of it too back then you know we were kind of the show in LA there wasn't a football team uh, the Lakers were coming off, you know, they were coming off, I think, the second three, Pete with Shaq and Kobe. So they were kind of down. The Dodgers weren't as good as they were now. So, like, we were – USC was – like, everyone wanted to be a part of USC in L.A. So when you look at the staff and then the development of the players, that was key. So then somewhere it all got lost right over the next kind of decade. And uh, Urban Meyer actually tells a pretty interesting story. I, I remember when, when Pete was there, his goal was – to build a fence around Southern California, right? All the way Orange County. You're talking about all the great quarterbacks and skilled players from South Orange County up. 
um, all the way to LA and you build a fence throughout there and you don't let the top players leave. You just don't. Yeah. That is and where Reggie you Bush from San Diego. Yeah. Reggie from San Diego. And if you look back at our roster, like, like, and, and his thing was, we're only going to go get NFL D one or uh, first round draft picks out of state. That was his philosophy. Um, obviously, you know, you miss on some guys. So he built that fence and urban had told me, you know, now, now I'm working with urban at Fox. He's like, Matt, we didn't even touch LA. We didn't even go out there. Because we knew we weren't going to get the top QB or the top running back or the Reggie Bushes of the world. So they really didn't recruit this area. And that was a lot of the top. And he was he was at Florida at the time, I think, and when they were rolling out there. Um, so but when obviously Pete left and then sanctions happened and we went through kind of Kiff and Sark and then and then the Helton era. Um, we kind of lost, and I say we, USC kind of lost track of how to recruit. And there's a lot of stories go back inside that building of that kind of, you know, um, that era where they just missed on a lot of guys. And, you know, a lot of that staff wasn't recruiting the local player. You know, you hear the stories from like Bryce Young and DJU, like some of these guys weren't even really recruited that hard by their, by their, their, by the school that they loved growing up and watching. Um, which obviously to me as a Trojan was like, are you kidding me? How does that happen? So it was just a different philosophy in recruiting. Obviously, um, that staff just wasn't able to perform like the previous one, like the one I was fortunate to play with. Um, so that really took, that really took them a step back. And if I go back, I think maybe what you said the last time they won a Pac-12 championship might've been Sam Darnold, I think, right. Was that when they won? Um, I mean, maybe, they, yeah. it might've been that when Sam had that, Sam had that crazy year where he just carried that team. Like he won three yeah. or four games, won nine straight or something. Yeah. yeah. And then they beat Penn state in that epic Rose bowl game. Um, that, that was a lot of Sam, you know, Sam was terrific that year. Um, and then now in this era of NIL, and you mentioned the transfer portal, it is really hard to keep a roster. I mean, you look at, look at Alabama just in the last 24 hours, Nick Saban retires and they lost damn near half their starters that are big time players because he left. And like, so the portal and NIL has affected how you build a team and how you coach a team and you build a roster and all those things. And it's affected the mindset of a player. I think, I think I still believe NIL is a great thing for the college athlete. But um, when you look at those two things and you look at the state of USC now and what Lincoln has been able to do, uh, Lincoln is recruited fine. Obviously, this year, he's this offseason, he's made the necessary adjustments on the defensive side of the ball, uh, which they had to get better from a staff uh, standpoint. Um, and, you know, they're right there. You know, they they went to they were a hamstring away, I say, two years ago from going to the playoff. You know, Caleb, obviously, we're at that game. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, that happened. And then last year just was a major disappointment. But. I think that's what it is, man. It's just different now. You know, if you if you have a good collective and you have an ability to spend money and get the top tier player, um, you know, you're going to be fine. If you don't, it's it's kind of a work in progress. And that's that's where USC is right now going into year three with Riley. So when you look in the 2000s, 88 and 25 record from 2002 to 2005, two national titles, three Heisman Trophy winners, four conference championships, right? Like, I'm not saying those exact number, but like, can you do that? Like, okay, with that, with NIL, with the collective, the changing landscape, it's a wild, wild west, everything's different, it's evolving. Like, we all know that. Like, can it, do you think it can be done in LA? Well, yeah, I mean, it sure can. It's just hard. Like, and, and this is why I love where college football is going because of obviously, um, you know, going to, to the playoff, expanding the playoff where there's going to be a lot more opportunity. And this year was a perfect example. And I know you follow college football close enough that, like, you know, Georgia may still have been the best team in the country. They didn't make it. Obviously, we know the Florida State situation, but Washington had a great run. Michigan wins a national championship, and everyone really didn't give them a shot earlier in the season. Um, it, there was a lot more parity this year in college football, and that was due to the portal and due to NIL. It, it really was. So I think there's going to be even more so when that playoff expands. And it, the level, the playing field is going to be low. I mean, look at Alabama now. Like, Kalen DeBoer is fantastic. Like, he's terrific. But that's a tough, like, like I don't know if Alabama is going to be the same as what we've known in the past two decades or decade with Nick. So If he does his job, they won't, right? He, it's The coach, is the, it's an extension of his personality right. and what he believes. And I played for Mike Price, who went to Alabama for 45 mm -hmm. minutes yep. and had a crazy deal go down and then came to UTEP. But, like... 
I was with him for three years. I've heard all the stories. I know how it is. And so like just this West Coast guy, the specific Northwest guy, not that Keelan DeBoer is from Seattle, but like it, he go, he's like every single thing was different. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Going from he's a Washington State forever in Alabama. Like, So what was different? Mm, absolutely every single thing. <laughs> I mean, to go from what Sioux, Sioux Falls, Wisconsin, I think he was at Fresno State and then yeah. and then Washington. Like he's he's great now. He's he's a heck of a coach, man. And he's he's a he's a football guy. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think this is an opportunity. Well, well Michigan's coach proved that like Harbaugh Absolutely. was good at USD. He was good at Stanford. He was good with the Niners. He was good with you know what I mean? Yeah. So he I mean, he knows, he knows how to build a program and. It, but but is I mean as you're saying like it is different like it's it's way different to recruit to Alabama than it is to Washington and you know those 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 in-house visits are a lot more different you know in, in the South yeah. and uh, so it, it's just uh, you know I, I think USC uh, I have faith um, you know year three I think I think we kind of like we came out the gate and year one it was eleven and two and holy crap like we get Caleb for another year and we're there we're there we're there. And you, I mean, you know, this, like, like he just masked a lot of inefficiencies on an offense. It's a little bit like Bryce Young a couple of years ago when he was at Alabama, like they were just so good that you just won a lot of games because of how good they were. And last year, unfortunately, I think when you have tape, you understand how you can kind of contain Caleb to some degree. Um, They just, it was just a massive disappointment. So I think, you know, fans are just so quick to jump ship and we stink and this and that, like, like it's going to take a little bit of time to build a little bit. And uh, they had, they hired a heck of a staff on that side of the ball, man. Like, like really um, elite defensive coaches, in my opinion. And now they just got to go get the players, man. I mean, that that's what they got to do. And you got, you got to, you can't rely. My, my thing is you can't rely on the portal so much. Like you just, like you just can't build a team that way. And you look at, yeah. look at prime and Colorado. Heck of it's a the job. draft I mean, and free agency. It's like, you can't, you got to build recruit. it in the free agency. Like, yeah. You got to do both. Real quick, this episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, and we are doing a new segment called Jordan's Picks. Now, Prize Picks is super easy to play. I can make all of my selections in less than 60 seconds. This week's on Prize Picks, I've got three selections. I'm picking three quarterbacks. The first one, CJ Stroud, 244.5 yards. I'm going more than. I know it's going to be cold and windy, and I know Baltimore's good. But if you look at the last three or four weeks of this football season, you could make an argument that C.J. Stroud is playing the best football, not out of the quarterbacks, in the NFL. Second one, I'm going Jordan Love at San Francisco, 248.5 yards. I love Jordan Love. He is balling, playing at a high level. But I'm going less than because I think the pass rush is going to play a huge role in this thing. So he's going to take what the defense gives him, and I think that's the difference in the game. Lastly, Josh Allen, I was surprised to see this. More or less than 235.5 yards. I'm taking that one. I'm hammering more. Look, I don't even care what the weather is. He can throw it in every single element. He's at home. Ton of energy, ton of juice, ton of momentum on a five or six game heater right now. I'm going more than. So those are my three picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy sports made easy. Go to prizepicks.com slash QB. Download the app and use the code QB for a match of up to $100. All right. So now going to the Big Ten. Um, pretty gnarly schedule, too. How does this change it? How much harder does this make it now going to the Big Ten? Now actually, you know, I I know what it's going to do for college football. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait for the Michigan fans to hate the right. SC fans and for Penn State fans to hate Oregon fans. Like, it's just going to make it better. But from in terms of developing a program, I mean, they got LSU, Michigan, Penn State, Washington, Notre Dame on the schedule next year, right? And then some other team they play is going to be really good, too, and be yep. better than we thought. There's going to be an Arizona that they play against, yep. you know, where you're like, damn, these playing – by week nine, these guys are really good. Um, how much harder does it make that that process? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's challenging. It's different. You know, it's different. And Lincoln knows this, but it's different ball in the Big Ten. Now, now look, I, I think, like, I cover the Big Ten, you know, every week almost. So you still, like any other conference, you have your your top two, three, four teams. And then you have the middle of the pack and the bottom of the pack that are that are similar to, to the same as, as the Pac-12. No, the Pac-12 was phenomenal this year. And I think USC, I mean, that was a, that was a tough, tough schedule, obviously, and they got exposed. But it, it's, it's a physical conference like the SEC. And the difference that I saw up front from those guys 
and people would say the same thing about the SEC is up front is the O line and the D line and just the size of those guys. We USC has the quarterbacks, you know that that'll be an interesting battle this year. But they have the skill players; they can get those guys. But it's the guys up front that's the difference. And if USC doesn't fix both sides of the ball, they are going to they are going to struggle once again next year. They just will because. Michigan loses guys, and, and Jim Harbaugh's probably gone. I mean, I think we all know that. They're still going to be really good. Um, you know, LSU is going to be really good. I mean, it's just different. You know, it's a different game. So you got to recruit a little differently. Uh, and, and, again, like I keep saying, they are, they're building the staff out, which is the most important thing. you got to have elite coaches that can develop. And then you go get your guys and you recruit. And uh, it's going to be fun. But I think SC's going to struggle next year, too. Like, I just – it's it's a challenge. You lose Caleb and – whether it's Miller Moss or even like like it's still it's still a challenge for them next year. I, I hope guys this time of year I'm doing draft prep right, so I hope guys go from college to pro. And I don't care what pick you are, what round you go, and how good you were in college. When you go from college to pro, you know this first round pick. There's a lot of newness. I call it. There's just a lot of new things. Some new coverages. You're in a mm -hmm. new city, new team, new staff, new schedule. You don't have school anymore. Yeah. Right. Now, not so much with NIL, but before NIL, oh, you have a bunch of money now. That's new, right? And it doesn't just affect you. It affects the people around you and in your circle. And so there's a lot of newness. Well, I think it's the same thing for these conferences as they realigned where, you know, SC can have all their processes in order, right? Any of the teams moving. Now you go to Big Ten, like your director of football ops is booking hotels in cities he's never been. To. You know what I mean? So there's just like, it affects everybody. Like, there's what, a lot like, of newness. Like, yeah. Weather. Does. Well, travel I mean, things, weather, equipment, weather, travel, obviously the big thing, they you know, like, and I know they'll favor the schedule of the West coast teams when they have to go to the East coast, but just everything logistically, uh, the style of play, uh, the weather, um, it's different. It is different. I think, th I think it's exciting, you know, like, like obviously it's bittersweet, the PAC 12, um, I mean, you know, that was kind of our West Coast conference. I mean, I played in it, and um, and it, it's kind of a bummer to see it dissolve the way it did. It was just unfortunate, and you do have to just adapt and move. I mean, this is the way college football is going, but um, I think there is a there is an excitement for the newness of it, as you're talking about. Um, uh, you get to play those teams, the exposure, uh, Michigan coming to the Coliseum, like Ohio State coming to the Coliseum. I think – you know, for, for, and you know this, I mean, USC fans, like, like, you know, we have a good fan base, but like, you know, if you're winning, they'll come out. If you're not, they're not going to show up. It's, it's not like that in the big 10, they show up regardless. Like totally. it'll be a hundred thousand people if you're two and 10 or 10 and two. So like to have the fan bases come, I think it's exciting for USC. It's exciting for the potential recruits to come to LA and be like, Hey, you're going to, you know, like these teams are coming out here. You're going to be on national television damn near every single week, you know, because of the, because of the conference. So yeah. uh, the newness is exciting, but yeah, it's, it's going to be a challenge for sure. Yeah. All right. Quick city of the union. So eight and five last year, generational quarterback talent, right. And, and went eight and five, according to on three, they, had, they were 18th in recruiting 40th in the transfer rankings. Didn't sign any of the top six in-state high school recruits. I'm just reading what it says. You talk to people all the time. You live in LA, you run into people, you do speaking engagements, all that stuff. When you meet, when you run into some pessimistic SC alumni fan and they just <laughs> shit on them and they're like, yep. this is I mean, like, what, what do you do to give them optimism or what do you have hope in? Like, what, what are you going, if this happens and it's all good? Well, yeah, I mean, dude, like, I, I think we're going to, I tell everyone, like, I think we're going to struggle next year. I, I just look at the schedule and, and you just talked about, you lose Caleb Williams, who's once in a generation type talent, obviously, and you lose some other key players too, not just him. Um, I think we're going to struggle. I, I would say the optimism is, is this one, the defensive staff is elite in my opinion. It, it just is. Now they got to go out there and prove it and come together and all that. But, but, you know, they just get Henderson from the Rams, who's great. Lynn from UCLA is young, but like I know UCLA tried really hard to retain him because he's that good. So they got guys now that are going to develop. I, I believe that. So that might take time. And look, I look at like I look at what you know Sark di just did at Texas, and Texas might be the most unrealistic expectation there is outside of Michigan who just won a championship. But Michigan had one since 97, but it's every year's national championship or we stink. It's, we have to like, 
like it's just not realistic now. And then what we just talked about, like it's harder to win and be consistent because of the transfer port and out. Stark in year three got his team to the playoff and it was just a steady little build. You know, I think what seven and five or whatever. And then last year they were closer. And yeah. this year was his hot seat, talent. hot seat playoff. <laughs> hot seat, hot seat every year. And then boom. Yeah. And then the most talented roster he's had. And by the way, they're getting players now because mm-hmm. that's just the way it works. So like, and that's going into year four next season. So like, like there, you just have to be patient, which is a word that no one likes to use in sports. I mean, NFL college, I mean, nowadays, but like, I, I do, I do think Lincoln made the changes. I wish, you know, they probably would have happened prior to this past season, but they happen now. Um, you know, they got a, a few portal guys and maybe they can build around uh, Miller Moss is good, man. Like I'm excited. Maybe he's the guy for a year or two. Like, like I, I just, you know, like who knows, man? Um, mm-hmm. I think next year will be another kind of growing pains to set up for potentially the next couple of years where, um, you know, I think they're going to be good, man. I think they'll be back. And I think they'll be in that kind of playoff conversation. I really do. Yeah. And I, another thing too is, and I've talked about this with a couple of people uh, that really know SC football. My brother was on the show like a couple months ago and we, we had talked about this was I don't think people give Lincoln Riley enough credit for what he stepped into. Yep. Okay, Caleb William masks a lot of things and, you know, playmakers and all that stuff. This is the thing. SC's been having wideouts come through there. I mean, JT Daniels was throwing <laughs> to like four NFL starters. You know what I mean? Amon yep. Ra had 1,400 yards this year. You know what I mean? Yep. But I don't think people give him credit for, and you look at Lincoln, who's going into his third year, Dan Lanning going into his third year, right? Dan Lanning took over a program in Oregon that was much harder, like the Ross harder than SC. And what happened under Helton is I, I, I mean, I'm around this. I do pro days. I'm always checking it out. I, yeah. I'm just like, SC is so soft. Oh my gosh. Yes. So soft. And so, and we saw it Sam Darnold's last year in college when they were really good and they missed a couple close games, all that stuff. And then they go to the bowl game and they play Ohio state and they just get picked Max. up and thrown on the ground yeah. by adults. <laughs> and so, whereas Cristobal, say what you want about Cristobal and what he does and doesn't do. Those dudes in Oregon play hard. They play together. They fight. They're tough as shit. You know what I mean? And so, yeah. like, I don't – they didn't – Dan Lanning and, and Lincoln Riley did not inherit and walk into the same situation. Right. right? Well, I, and so, I tell, that yeah. doesn't get fixed with six players in the portal. Dude, I, you're so right. I, I mean, it was a dumpster fire what Lincoln walked into. Trust me. You were around it. I was around you know, it way more than I, I do. Talked, I talked to the coaches like, like it was, it was like, it, it, they just didn't recruit players, man. And and again, there were some good players and there was some talent here, obviously, but like up front and, and urban, I remember urban, urban was coaching that team. And he goes, dude, he goes, I remember when we were uh, pregame and he was watching SC at the time. And he goes, Oh my God, we're going to beat this team by 50 points. Like, like he already knew. Cause he could just see it. As you know, you can just mm-hmm. tell. Uh, he he took over a a team that just it, they just weren't ready, and you brought in a couple good a couple players, Caleb being one of them, and won eleven games, and and then the bar was just set. And I think that might have been just the issue. It's like they got out the gate almost too fast. Now, um, so so I think people just need to understand like they're going to recruit. NIL is is, is kind of getting into place. They're doing a better job. Um, you know, he's always, he's gonna, he's got, uh, you know, Juju Lewis, the number one player in the country that just reclassified coming in in a couple of years. Um, you know, the next big year. 10, yeah, next year yeah, the after big 10, this season. Yeah. Yeah. So he just reclassified at 25. So like, like just patience, he's making the changes. It takes time to build. It just does. No one comes in in year one or year two. I mean, look, Kalen DeBoer is actually, I mean, coach DeBoer, I mean, last year, they were great. They sure went to the playoff in two years at Washington, um, it, it can be done, but it's hard, you know? So like people just need to calm down, man. Like we're, SC is going to be fine. Um, everyone can be disappointed in the last year. I sure as hell was too. Uh, but again, he inherited, he inherited a mess, man. Like, and that's, yeah. that was a mess that was tough to clean up. I think fans don't understand this for your favorite team. You can not win very many games and be heading in the right direction. Yeah, absolutely. Both of those things can be true at the same time. Yep. But when it when we when we score something off of just the result, and I understand this is a results driven business. You can be the hardest working quarterback in America, and if all you do is turn it over, you suck. So mm-hmm. like I, I understand that that it's a results driven, but you can win eleven games and then win eight games and lose these players, but be heading in the right direction at the same time. Absolutely. Even if that takes twelve more months to do that. Um 
my optimism is found. I'm not a fan of really any school or team. I don't know. I'm just kind of not never really was, but, um, but I follow it and I want the best for everybody. And so when I look at SC, my optimism is uh, I, I said this, I've only said this about one player ever when they were going through the elite 11 process. Uh, I said, Caleb Williams is the best one I've ever seen. And we've had everybody come through there, right? Trevor and Justin and all Tua and all these guys come through. I'm like, that's the best one I've ever seen. Julian's the second one I'm saying that about. Mm -hmm. uh, he'll be out here in a couple of weeks and spend time with Julian. Um, and so if this is a growing pains year, right? Mm -hmm. But they get tougher and they tackle better and they take better pursuit angles. And, they, you know, just like <laughs> the dumb little shit football. you work on in spring that wins you game. Look at Philly. Everyone's talking about the tackling in Philly. Like, I know. turns out they lost in the playoffs because of shit that you work on in March. So if that's the case, then I think you, every, every USC fan should look at, you know, it, what's your opinion of the program? Gauge it over the next 24 months, not 12. I agree. And, fair? and real quick, fair. And I get last year as you just said like it was so bad basic fundamental football and i think that's what frustrated fans and just college football fans like god when you watch usc play in particular on defense out of place uh wrong angles missed i just it was just it was painful to watch mm -hmm. and it was week in and week out and you could say it's a talent thing a coaching thing it is what it was I think with the it's staff, essentially watching your favorite team commit unforced errors yeah it's hard. And, and so and i think missing that's layups what, that's what exactly missing free throws, missing layups. And I think to your point this coming year for me, I just want to see them. Look, I'm, I'm re as a, as an analyst, or if I step back and just say like, I'm an SC fan, I'm realistic that they could lose four or five games this year. I just am. It's a tough schedule. And I don't know if we have the roster, but I want to see like good tackling. I want to see the defense play hard for four quarters. I want to see uh, USC be more physical at the line of scrimmage on the offensive side of the ball. And then, and then as you said, like you're like, okay, now we can see where this is going. Whereas the mm -hmm. last two years have kind of been just, well, shit, it's a crap shoot. Caleb, we won 11 this year. Like we're going to, we have Caleb again, we'll be fine. And then, you know, all of a sudden you're not. So, uh, yeah, it's a good point, man. I just, it, patience, man. Next couple of years, USC is going to look a lot different in my opinion. Awesome. Let's shift over here uh, to the QB room. So Caleb and Malachi Nelson are gone. Miller Moss showed out in the Holiday Bowl. Um, and then you got Jordan, is it Maeva? My Ava, yeah. Right? yeah, my Ava coming in. Um, any concerns Lincoln didn't get some shiny quarterback from the portal or you, you like the move? You feel like it's all under control? I, I, I you know, look, I, I think there was only really, um, you know, there's some couple good players. Cam Ward was a really good player. And I think, you know, he went to the draft and now he's at Miami. I, I think Cam Ward, and I'm sure you'll be studying him a lot more as he goes to the draft. Like he, he's got first round, like he, he's a good player, a really good player. Um, that was kind of like the guy in the portal this year. If he didn't get, you know, you, you kind of went with some other guys. Um, I, I like this because one, I love, I've known Miller Moss since he was little. He went to my camps when he was little. He is, he is, he's a high IQ guy. He's a good football player and he balled out against a good, a good defense in a holiday bowl with the only opportunity he's been given. Uh, and he just doesn't, I've taught, he just doesn't care. Like he's like, I'll compete with anybody. If I don't, if I don't, if I lose a job, I'll be a good teammate and I'll be a good, like he, that's his mindset. Um, it's almost like Mac Jones ish. Right? Yeah. And, and Lincoln, sat there for three years, was a good teammate when he got his chance. Dude, and, he, and, and the players love him, man. Like the players love him in that locker room. And then you get Maiva, who's young and who's got a couple, who's got, I think, three years or so. So, like, I, I like, I like that. If that, and if he's really, he was very good last year. If he develops from Miller, whatever you have, a you have sustained, you have a quarterback that's there for a couple of years instead of Caleb, we had two years, but instead of going one and done, like a lot of teams are doing, you know, like I just, to me, like, I just don't think you can win year in and year out like that. Like, I think you got to develop guys. And then you talk about, you have Julian Lewis coming in. So all of a sudden you might have a four or five or six year window where you only have two quarterbacks going through the system, which I think is fantastic for mm -hmm. any team. It's, instead of you, know, you look at some of these teams and you're just going year portal, year portal, you're getting the next best guy. I just don't think that's sustainable. So to that point, I kind of like where USC's at. You got a guy who's been there, who's been in a locker room, who's, who's got a lot of confidence and swag to him. Um, and then you got a young kid who's played a lot of who played last year, uh, who balled out and, and, and fits Lincoln's system. So like, it's going to be an interesting battle. Uh, I kind of like where they're at, man. I really do. And then you yeah. got, you know, the big time kid coming in, in in a year or two. Yeah. It's interesting where you got the older veteran in the room, Miller Moss has one start. And then you got the young guy 
but he's the young guy is the one that has the experience, right? And so it's just yeah. kind of interesting dichotomy, right? Where he played, I'm sure he played what 13 games or something, however many they play. Yeah, I think he was so, con- that conference player of the year or freshman <clears throat> player of the year. So he he can ball. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting, man. And 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 I know for a fact, like that is an open competition, and Miller will have every opportunity to win it. There's no doubt. That's great. Uh, shift gears. We're gonna play a little game here. This is called More or Less. All right, we'll throw some things at you. Uh, and this is presented by Prize Picks. Um, I'm going to give you a statement. You tell us the answer more or less than the number I give you. Okay. All right. Seven and a half Heisman winners from USC. More. Yeah, it's eight with Reggie. Just want to yeah, say you no, counted yeah, it. Yeah, come on, dude. <laughs> um, one and a half hours per day that you spend creating TikTok content. Uh, less. <laughs> you got a team? That's, that's that's yeah, and that's that's facts. I'm not lying. No, that's, that's a good great. I, I believe you. Uh, 0.5 more seasons that Pete Carroll coaches college football. So basically, does he coach again in college? Less. All right. Um, he coached nine seasons. Needs ten to be eligible for the College Football Hall of Fame. Fun fact. I don't. I don't see it. Man. I don't think. I don't, I don't think he gives a shit about yeah. that. Um, yeah. Four and a half years until you have more Instagram followers than Richard Jefferson. You're at 165. He's at 46. 46. He's had more than that, isn't he? Instagram. He's what does like he have on Instagram? 486. Oh, 486. Yeah. What was it? What was the number? You're 165. And what was the one and a half years? Oh, four and a half years. You think in the next five years, you'll have oh, more? Oh, yeah. L- less. Less. Okay. I like it. Uh, <laughs> 50.5%. So basically more than more or less than 50. Percent of the time that you pull up on set for work at Fox... And you know, it doesn't matter what anybody says, you know you look better than Brady today, Brady Quinn. You guys are two of the handsomest, really good players ever. I got to be honest, Les, he, he, is, he is always put together, man. He's always put together. He is your typical Midwest collar, <clears throat> vest, khakis with the boot. Like that's, like, that's how he is. I am literally, as you know, we're probably the same, uh, West know. Coast. I am in a t-shirt and flip-flops everywhere I go. Yeah. You're more like Carson though, where like it yeah. also doesn't have to match and like these <laughs> shoes might be 14 years old. I might've borrowed them from my son. You know what I mean? <laughs> Dude, I'd never, I actually really quick story. I'll never forget my rookie year in Arizona. I come in and I'm wearing like, Dude, like how I would normally dress, t-shirt, like shorts, flip-flops. Like this is rainbow. baggy phase too, where sweatpants oh, were baggy. super baggy. Yeah. Ra- rainbow, rainbows. And I'm just coming and I was like the a, the number 10 pick and i'm like dude i could care less and all my boys like i remember all our draft class like we had leonard pope who went to georgia and they're like they just started ripping me like dude the really i'm like man this is i'm from orange county man i don't yeah. care what i look like yeah. <laughs> it was so, so funny good. man um 0. 0.5 million dollars made by college athletes through your company hall of goats 0. 0.5 over more or less than a half a million bucks <sighs> Oh, uh, less. Okay. Give us a little plug and detail. I've seen it. I don't know a ton about it. People ask me about it. So, yeah. So, um, actually a lot of new stuff going on. We actually just, I'm going to, going to post, uh, later, but we just launched our storefront, uh, with some of the merch and, and, uh, the new hats that we got. I'll have to, I'll send I'll you, one. you my pretty, address. They're, they're pre- I got you. They're pretty cool. We got a lot of different colors. Um, and then we were, so we're making a college football video game. We've pivoted a little bit, just, a, 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 you know, obviously we're going with the NFT model and all that, but um, we are we are about a year, year and a half out from the video game launch, which is really cool. So wow. the whole thing is kind of just a, a lifestyle video game merch brand um, that we're, we're building out. So Caleb Williams was a part of it, obviously, and, and still is. And uh, we're pumped, dude. So a lot of things we had to kind of just slow down and kind of reevaluate. Uh, where things were going, but um, we just lost the storefront shop.hollowgoats.com. So go buy a hat, man. You know, support the cost. I will. I'll, I'll send you uh, a hat for free. You can tell someone else to go buy it. <laughs> you send me one for free and I'll buy one. That's usually what I do with my buddy's stuff. Um, all right. Over uh, or more or less 3.5 years until SC wins the Big Ten. Uh, oh, that's a good question. Um, I'll say less. All right. Three three years. Okay. And then last one, four and a half days that you were a Buffalo Bill. <laughs> were we at the same time? Uh, one year apart. 
I think I was less. You were five days. What a, I was miser- th- what a miserable I- week for me. So let's tell the story. So, Dude, I remember you texting me. I was like, shit. On my way to the game. Dude, so. so go ahead. You go. Okay, so I'll, I'll start. So the year before, Dave Dunn calls me. And I'm pretty much done. Who's also and, my agent at yeah, the time. Yeah, so Dave calls me. I'm on the elliptical, dude, at 24-hour fitness. And I'm just like, I'm still working out. But like, I was I was pretty much done, dude. I'll never forget. I'm in there in 24 hours. Yeah, but you're not training with Troll at the yard. You're paying $14 a month for a membership to 24 I, I, no, I was paying, no, I was paying a day. I was just going for the day. I paid like 20 bucks oh. just to work out that day. I was literally chilling. And then I think Kevin Cobb, it was Kevin Cobb. I think he had a concussion, right? He was out for the year yeah. where something happened. And so, uh, uh, Hackett, right? Hackett's the OC. And anyway, like Dave's like, Hey dude, Buffalo, like they want, they want to give you a workout. Can you fly it? It was a red eye. It was like three hours later. I was like, I mean, just I'm like, I'm like, yeah, like, dude, I'll, I'll try. Like it is what it is. Uh, so me and actually, um, God, who did I have the workout with? Um, John Beck, me and John Beck did the workout. Um, they, they signed me and they're like, Oh, you're going to start you know, <laughs> for in four days. So I was like, I was kind of fired up, but I was like, mentally I was gone, dude. Like I was just like, what am I doing, dude? I was, you know, and I was pretty smart. Like I was picking up the offense, like in a couple of days, you know, giving me a chance and Hackett was great. I actually knew Hackett from, from before, but like just completely went out there and just, Actually, the funny thing is, dude, is the first play of the game. And this is I, the fourth preseason game. Fourth just preseason for game, for those right? Against, along. against Detroit in Buffalo. Fans greeted me. They were pumped like, oh, you're going to be the savior. I'm like, I don't know, dude, if I'm going to be the savior. But yeah. uh, the first play of the game, dude, I throw a go route. And I defer it right in the hands, dude. Like literally 45, 50-yard go route in the hands. And it was like a good play, but kind of dropped. And it was, just, it was a tough play, but could have been caught. And... Since then, I ended up finishing like three of 10 with like three picks. And it was the worst outing. And I remember sitting there in the second half on the sideline. I kept my helmet on because I was embarrassed. I was like, I didn't want to be there. I was done. And I'm just like, I cannot. And I actually, and I tell this too, I just met my wife now, Josie. We just started dating like that summer. And that this was in August. And like, I knew she was the one. So I was like, I wanted to get back to my oldest son, Cole, at the time. I wanted to get back to my girlfriend. I was checked out, but it was the worst four days of my football career by far. Then yeah. fast forward to you and you call me the same fuck, the same week, <laughs> the same situation. And I think I told you the same thing. Like, I don't know, dude, you might. Good be luck, sure. bro. <laughs> yeah, good luck, bro. <laughs> I, I don't see, I don't know how you're going to make this. They just need an arm. You know, maybe that was like, I, I think they just needed an arm with me. Like, Hey, we'll give a shot. Like whatever. It wasn't, <laughs> I don't know how uh, your experience, what, what was yours though? What was your, week mine like? was, I was a bear and I had a great off season. They were yeah. they, at the start of the off season. Mark Trefton's like, you're our two. We're not signing anybody. Josh McCown balled out and just left. And then I tear my peck in OTAs throwing a flat route at the time. Had no idea how now I understand the body better, whatever. And so I just couldn't throw. And so I come back to camp. And I got healthy. They had to sign. They signed Jimmy Clausen, who in this process became a really good friend. And I don't know yeah. if you know Jimmy, but yeah, great of course. Love Jimmy. And and so I tear my pack. I'm coming back. I'm doing this art machine, all this crazy shit. Brandon Marshall's got me on. And uh, I come back, but I just don't trust it. And so we go through training camp and it's dead even. Jimmy and I, every category, it's dead even. And Mark's after the third preseason game, literally everything's even. And he's like. I can't go into the season wondering if my backup quarterback is going to tear his pack. I, I just like, you're not. So here's what we're do. I'm going to let you go, but I've made a call. I don't even think this was legal. He goes, you're not flying home. You're flying to Buffalo tonight. They're going to sign you. And at this time it was EJ Manuel who had yeah. put together a little string of some seasons where he really struggled. Yeah. And so I'm like, all right, interesting. Buffalo doesn't know anything about my pack. So I fly from Chicago to Buffalo on Tuesday night practice Wednesday, the final preseason game is always on Thursday. So I was there for three days. And so if you count the land at night, drive to random doctor office for physical, if you count that as one of the days, well, the practice before the last preseason game is not practice. It's a walkthrough. Right. Yeah. They're not course. practicing. They kind of already got their roster set. They got, they got to make four or five decisions after this game. That's it. I, this is like year seven for me. I, I, I get what's going on. So uh, it was Nathaniel Hackett, who was awesome and everybody's mm-hmm. wrong on him. He's a great yeah. dude and super brilliant mind. Yeah. Um, and then Todd 
drawing a blank on his name. He's an OC right now, but he was the QB coach. Monken? No. No. Younger uh... dude. Anyways, so me and Todd um, pull an all-nighter. And, and so I go to practice, and it's walkthrough. I'm learning everything. And they kind of give me like four run plays, two screens, three dropbacks, and two quicks, call it a day. Yeah. And – and they're like, how much do you want to play? And I was like, I, I'd love to just get a couple snaps. But all these players, and dude, this is Sammy Watkins, Robert Woods. Like, there were some horses in that huddle. Yeah. And they're like, they were pretty down on EJ at this point. And so the whole practice, they're like, I, I really fired up to see what you got. And, I, and I'm calling my wife, and I'm like, I, I, one, I'm making this team. Two, I, I'm going to start here. Wait, so this is you, crazy. Wait, so, so, you only, so you were going, only going to play a couple snaps? I was going to play a little bit in the fourth quarter, and here's what happened. In the fourth, okay. e EJ was going to play the, the majority of the game. They needed to get him reps in development. He starts one for 14 or something like that, and the place is booing so loud. The head coach, Doug Marone, who's yeah. clearly a former offensive lineman, and if you know Doug, he's going to tell you that he's from New York and he used to whoop a lot, a lot of ass in every yeah. conversation, whether it comes up or not. Total I, – I, I have some disdain for this guy. Like – Fifth series of the game, Palmer, you're in. And there's no other quarterback suited up. So all of a sudden I go from I'm going to get a series or two to I play like 11 series. <laughs> and I go four so for 26 with three picks, two of them to the house. And I, I got Marquise Goodwin. I got all these guys. I'm like, hey, 88, are you converting versus this? They're calling plays. And I'm going like, I don't know that play. And so then they're going. E so EJ Manuel, who I love, by the way, I think EJ Manuel. Great dude. Totally screws you in that game. You were set. I was. Isn't that wild? Cost dude? me like nine hundred grand. Yeah. I was gonna say, isn't that <laughs> wild? Like, <laughs> I just I remember was, going like Tom Brady was awesome at that time, and I'm like, I think if you put Tom Brady in the same situation, he doesn't do well. So last season, when I see Baker Mayfield go to the Rams and play on Thursday night, it changed my whole perspective on and Baker he balled, Mayfield. And he balled. Balled out. And I, I go, I, and then Josh Dobbs this year. I'm like, this is harder than NFL quarterback. Because yep. you. it is way more about preparation. Like, you can move a player to a new NBA team, and they can go for 36 and oh, 12. Yeah. Easy. But <laughs> quarterback? And so you and I had identical situations. <laughs> and I think I told you, I'm like, I'm debating right now driving myself to the airport from Dude, the stadium I right now. I couldn't, I couldn't, I could not get out of that meeting fast enough the oh. next day, dude. And I was with Doug and I, and Marone and the GM. And I was like, and even Doug was like, I was like, man, like, honestly, Doug, like, appreciate you. I just, I just, I checked out, dude. And he was yeah. like, he, it was, it was like, it, they just knew, but I was like, yeah. it was so embarrassing. Dude. <laughs> Well, a good thing came of it for me. Doug Whaley was the GM. Yeah, Whaley was and great. Russ, and Russ Brandon was the team president. Yeah, Those guys run the XFL, and one of the first things they did was bring me in to handle quarterback development for the XFL. The, those guys the were awesome, man. Came like, full circle. Yeah. The way I handle myself in that situation, blah, yeah. blah, blah, turned into, like, here I am, 39 years old, and it's a great, you know, business uh, initiative for me. So... Funny that you and I, this is the only thing you and I share in our careers. Cause I, dude, so I didn't good. get a lot of trophies or cha I don't have a lot of rings so good, um, man. or any, but um, yeah, that's awesome, man. Uh, well, dude, thank you so much for carving time out of your day and talking so about SCM. Funny. We talk about it all the time. Um, but uh, you know, relationship means a lot to me. I appreciate you joining us. Good Sorry, Kyle, did be here. The show's always better with Kyle. Um, and good <laughs> luck with uh, everything you got coming up this off season, man. Appreciate you, buddy. Thanks for having me, man.